Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for this Saturday, uh, Cannoneer versus Barajo. And first of all, if you look really, really carefully at the apex, you might see me and my daughter there. Uh, we are actually going uh, courtesy of DraftKings. Um, actually, to be fair, not courtesy of DraftKings, courtesy of myself. Uh, earning enough points last year that DraftKings awarded me uh, points that I traded in for this uh, trip. Um, I'm going out there tomorrow. I'm going to register actually for Circa. And then uh, Saturday, we're going to the Apex. Uh, it, pretty unique experience, right? Because it's not this, in this big arena. It's like 80 people there. So it's like more of a studio atmosphere, which I'm, I'm, I'll be very curious to see how uh, what the vibe is there. But I'm looking forward to it. Very, very strange card. Um, started off with like nine fights and then there are two ultimate fighter fights that had to be played out and then then the bazooka's opponent dropped out and he got replaced and so it is a very strange card and if you want me to be completely honest i really shouldn't be breaking it down quite yet um there's one fight at least that hasn't even put salaries out um, but just in case I don't get around to doing this uh, tomorrow or Saturday, I wanted to at least get something out there. Now I'm planning on uh, maybe Saturday morning doing a lineup construction breakdown. I think uh, my daughter's going to be doing uh, spa stuff uh, Saturday morning, and I'm going to be taking care of some uh, some other business. So I might have a chance to to follow up with this. But just in case I don't. I wanted just to go over at least what I what I knew and what I what I thought about this slate at least at this stage. Um, okay, so let's start with with I guess the fights we know and well we can we can derive stuff from that which we don't know. So the first thing that we know is that uh, Dennis Bazooka um, was supposed to be fighting Danny Silva. but instead he's now fighting Francis Marshall and he is a minus. Instead of being a plus 192 fav underdog, he's now a plus maybe like 130 underdog. And we'll take a look at the pricing here. And as you can see, he is currently 7,400. Okay, so... 7,400 is, is, gives him a decent amount of line value, and that makes him a good play pretty much by itself um, if it was an extremely short card. Now, again, they're adding fights. It could be as many as 12 fights. So on a 12-fight card, he's going to need a little bit more than just the line value to be an extremely strong play. But he does have some grappling, and I think that the combination of the line value, as, as kind of moderate as it is, along with the grappling, is going to make him, you know, very, very playable, to say the least. And on the other side of this, Francis Marshall has grappling upside as well. And you've, you combine that with the fact that I think Bazooka is going to be popular because of the line value. You're going to get Marshall as being a very, very decent leverage option as well. So... Let's just take care of this fight right now. I do think that both sides of this fight uh, should be should be priorities in, in your GPPs. Uh, the other thing let's take care of is uh, the, the main event. So Jared Cannonier against Cal Barajo. I think this is a very difficult fight to fade. Um, more, listen, most five-round fights are difficult to fade. But when we go through the rest of this card, I mean, the upside that exists here is very... I think it's thin. Well, I shouldn't say thin. I, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. The problem here is that the big favorites, which we'll get to, to me, don't really possess like an incredible amount of upside. So these mid-range fighters that, that are going to score these, these numbers uh, are going to be pretty valuable in, in those types of builds. Um, if, if you knew that the big favorites were going to score well, then you'd have to try to take, you know, take shots at like punts or something like that to get those big favorites in. But because, and we'll get to this, the, the big favorites don't really look that great. Um, this, this fight at five rounds is going to be very, very strong. And, and, and they both bring their own uh, advantages. You know, Jared Cannonier, he's, he, he can actually get some takedowns of his own if he wants, but, but um, not if he wants, if, if things go his way. 
but uh, he also is can put up a lot of volume. He does have some finishing upside and the five rounds to work with, plus his price being, what is he, is he 7,600 or something? I mean, it makes it just a very, very strong play. So uh, he's really good. And, Chal- and Calbrajo, I mean, he's minus 248, only 8,600, plus his, he has an incredible amount of takedown upside, control upside, and he's finishing upside. So both of these guys are very, very strong. So that this is another very, very good fight to target. Um, again, kind of moving in and out of order here, but but uh, this uh, probably the best overall play on the board is going to be Zach Reese. Uh, forget the minus six hundred, which is which is brutal enough. I mean, look look at his his uh, his metrics inside the distance. I mean, he's minus three twenty five inside the distance. Uh, not not to mention. Even round one, I bet you he's not bad. I mean, he's, minus, he's plus 110 round one. And not only that, but he's, he's so aggressive that that he can he can rack up a just a, a ton of points. I mean, he goes for a, a lot of ground and pound. I mean, he could be – I mean, if things go his way, he, he could get 130 without even getting that quick win bonus. It's uh, – he's just – has the most upside. He's, he's the second most likely winner on the slate as well. Um, but his, I mean, he's got to be the best player. Um, wh- it, whether you want to play the other side just to be a pain in the neck for leverage, yeah, I guess um, that that's definitely more for a discussion of how to beat the 150, which I'm going to try to. Um, hang on, just one second. I'm going to show the door. Sorry. So um, I'll try to do a video that touches on that a little bit, but um, he's, I mean, this is, uh, Reese is clearly the best play on the slate and, and Medina just for leverage, I guess, but it's, it's a tough spot. I mean, he's plus 400 for a reason. And it's going to be rough. Um, some more kind of key fights to target here. I mean, I think that this, this, from what I've read about this loader Valentin situation, I think this is another one that you're supposed to get after because um, both of their styles are very, um, very conducive to high scores. You have loader who's inside the distance line is not great, but he is a, apparently a pure wrestler. And as we know, you know, pure wrestlers are going, are prone to, to pick up a whole lot of points in their wins. Now, again, uh, whether he's, there's going to be an anti-wrestler bias for the judges is, is something else. But again, we don't really care about too much. I mean, we're, we're presuming that in our analysis that he wins a certain amount of time. So the question is what he's going to score in those wins. And in those wins, he's probably going to score pretty well. And Valentin, you look at his inside the distance line, his um, it's like plus 130 or so. And, and for his price of 8,400, that's extremely strong. So, I believe that that both sides of this fight are 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 really really good. So we're going to keep track of like the key fights, and then there'll be some pretty good fades we'll get to. All right. So and and, and I think the is it the last one? Yeah, I think the last. Well, I'll I'll go two more. Uh, this um, let's put uh, Bazuki before we forget. This Shabazi and Mirshard fight. I think playing both sides of this is going to make a lot of sense. You, you look first at Shabazi in, inside the distance line. It's probably like minus 150 at least. We'll take a look. Uh, mm, yeah, minus 250, which is ridiculously strong. Um, but yet, on the other side, you have Mirshard, who, who has been known to be a pain in the ass, you know, especially late. I mean, if he can survive the onslaught of Shabazi and maybe get some takedowns and, and then get a sub, I mean, he could certainly put up a really big score uh, his actual metrics are not great, you know, plus 400. Uh, that's, I mean, you usually need to be competitive in DFS, even as a big punt, uh, a, an inside the distance line is about plus 300. Uh, but I think if, if you factor in that he could get takedowns also, I think he kind of moves up the ladder a little bit. So both sides of the Shabazi and Mirshar fight, I think are certainly worth playing. And, and the, and the other one that I want to, uh, and there, there are two others, I guess we have to talk about here. Um, this one is a little bit less appreciated, but this, this Borshev-Yantop fight, 
Um, what's interesting is, is, is the Borshev side makes sense, right? He's, he's plus 140 inside or plus 160 inside. His price is, is just okay, I guess. I mean, it's 8,700, so he's really just kind of on the borderline. He does have some sneaky knockdown upside, which might not be projected. Uh, or pro it probably is. It's probably in his projection somewhere. But um, this isn't bad. And, and, and the interesting side is the on top side, only because from what everybody has been saying, I mean, the, the way to beat Borshev is to take him down. And, and, and the thing is, is that Yontop has not really shown his, you know, his, his, his takedown abilities. But from a little research, I mean, I have seen that, that he does have a well-rounded game. So if he really wants to, to do this, he could attempt to take down Borshev. And if that's the case, then, then, then we could be in business with somebody like him. So uh, this, this fight, again, it, it's, it's secondary, but it's um, certainly on the radar. And then the last one I want you know, to highlight is this one that just got put up here. Now, again, we're, we're really, really super speculating because we don't have uh, we don't have all the props and we don't have salads, but presuming you know Fletcher minus one hundred and fifty, and then R Ramaska plus one hundred and thirty, you know you could expect to see something like like an eighty four hundred seventy eight hundred something like that. And the one thing I do see is the the under one and a half rounds is about Pickham. Which to me means that this fight is is going to project really well with respect to the finishing upside. Uh, the props will come out, and uh, if I follow up on this, I'll, I'll I'll go over this again. But I will expect to see pretty good inside the distance lines of both these cats, and uh, it's going to be a pretty key fight, I believe, to to target. So the the, the fighters I've ignored really are come in, in different categories, right? So the first one is this first fight of the night, this Kong Wang versus Victoria Leonardo. I mean, Kong Wang is the biggest favorite on the card. You know, first of all, she's plus 1,200 to win. And and um, and not only that, but you look at her her price, though. Her price is, is, is 9,600. Now, remember, for 9,600, I mean, yeah, okay, she's supposed to win, but... To really get there at 9,600, she's got to get a first-round knockout. I mean, almost every time. I mean, I think every time. I mean, unless somehow she's got this incredible grappling upside that we haven't really, you know, seen. And you, you look at her inside the distance line, and it's, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's minus, minus 188. But what, what is she in the first round? Round one is plus 200 or something. I don't know. I, I I I really think this is the, this is the thing you're supposed to fade here. I mean, even if she gets a first round knockout, it might not make it. You know, she's going to have to get uh, uh, ninety six hundred. What do you need? I mean, she has to get either two knockdowns and a finish, or a a, a, a under sixty second bonus, or takedowns followed by a finish and i'll tell you leonardo's tough man i mean she can she can scrap a little bit so if she can just survive the first round i mean from a dfs perspective it could be over um anyway so i, I i'm not interested in that and the other one i'm really not interested in is the um is is the other big favorite okay that's uh that's michael morales so so michael morales again he is he's minus eight million to win okay um, but you look at his inside the distance line. Where is this? Mm -hmm. Michael Morales inside the distance. I mean, for, for, for his price to pay off. What is he? It's plus 130. I mean, he's plus 130 and he's 9,500. You just can't play them. I mean, you just can't do it. So, so I don't like that. So that, that fight, I'm probably going to fade. The, the, the Leonardo fight, I'm probably going to fade. And these are the two biggest favorites on the board. Um, and then there's this other fight that we have to, we'll, we'll talk about some others in a minute. So 
Khan Ofi versus Mehran Santos. Again, this one is looks like a lemon, right? Because the over one and a half is minus is is minus two hundred. Okay, as opposed to that other fight I, I identified, where it's basically pick them. So I'm just guessing that this is not going to project all that well, but I, I literally don't know. I just don't know. I mean, he's got a couple of decisions here among some KOs, you know, so I, I don't know about this. I, I, again, I wish I had more for you, but it's just the way the fights have been released this week. I just, I just haven't done enough work. And then the props aren't out, so I, I can't really guess. Um, I imagine the fight will end up being a lemon of some kind, at least in the projections. Um, and then you have um, another fight, which I think we're going to end up fading. And this is this Nunez Cavalcante fight, a female fight. You have inside the distance lines of let's take a look. I mean, Cavalcante plus 385 is the favorite. And then Nunez is not bad, but, but like plus 325 at inside the distance at what price? At, at 7,700, though. I mean, you kind of would rather her, I mean, rather, it'd be nice if she were like 7,200 or something for that type of, of inside the distance line. So Cavalcante, unless we knew she had some kind of huge takedown upside, which which doesn't really exist for her. I mean, I guess she could, but she's off a year. I mean, it just it just feels like a women's fight. that's just not going to go anywhere. So so I think that one's kind of a fade. Um, and, and the final fight that we have to talk about is the Angela Hill Tabitha Ritchie fight. And, and I, I, I just have an opinion on this one. I, I think that um, I think that Ritchie's an amazing play here. Um, you know, I, I know that Angela Hill has been very, very resolute, <laughs> to say the least, about dealing with these wrestlers. I mean, she's been she's been great. I, I just you can't you can't dispute what she's been doing. Uh, Luana Pinheiro, she was supposed to get taken down by her. Nope, she actually got the takedown, a second round sub. Denise Gomes just basically she owned her like the whole fight pretty much. Okay, she got beat up by Mackenzie Dern, big deal. I mean, Mackenzie Dern's like elite almost. Beat Emily Dakota, she beat Lupita Godinez. I mean, this is um, this is I mean, she's obviously been doing it. You know, but I don't know. I, I, it's a Tabitha Ricci's younger than these some of these girls. I mean, she's been she's she's just she's fights really hard every fight. She's gonna be going for these takedowns, and I think that she can she can win some of the striking battles that some of these other fighters had trouble with. Um, there there's a little bit of of a backlash about her last win that she didn't deserve it. So maybe she has a chip on her shoulder about that, and and um, I think she has a really good performance here. And, and, and if she wins, I, I don't think, she, don't think she's going to win the stand up version of this fight. Um, she could, but I don't think that's what she's going to do. I think she's going to keep going for these takedowns and I think she's going to eventually get them and, and have a really, really nice performance here. So I, I actually do like her. Now, again, this is just more my opinion than anything else. Cause again, if you look at the, at the, uh, the inside the distance lines, I mean, neither of them are worth playing. Right, um, I think they're both plus five. I would imagine both plus five hundred. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, both like well over five hundred. Um, but you add the takedown upsides of, of Tarici. I, I think she could. I think she can make up for it. Now, I, I also think though that in the one fifty max, it, maybe it doesn't quite have the upside, you know, as some of these others. Um, I don't think that that that. Ricci has like a 120 point upside or anything like that. I think, I think that I'm just kind of confident that she could grind out of a win with a couple of takedowns and, you know, kind of like her win against Jillian Robertson and get like 80 or 85 or something like that to put you in position in some of these smaller contests. I don't know if she has the upside at, at you know, to win you a 150 max or something like that, but, but I certainly like her and she's not going to be particularly high owned. I don't think, which also is why I don't think, much of playing Angela Hill on the other side either. So um, that's pretty much what, what I have here. You know, I, um, I didn't talk about whether it was right to fade some of these big favorites, but again, even just because I don't like Morales doesn't mean I want to play Madney, who's just 
doesn't win too often enough. And likewise, just because I don't like Wang doesn't mean I want to play Leonardo. It just doesn't win often enough. You know, it just doesn't work that way. But I think that we you focus on the key fights that we talked about. And, and again, I'll try to follow up on the on some of these fights that were added. Uh, if I get any more with the, uh, about their styles, if I get any more about the uh, the props, I might do a follow up thing if I do a lineup construction video. But aside from that, I think we did a pretty good job of getting through all this stuff. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for now. So uh, good luck, everybody.